as we sit here today, the biggest risk today, is it doing too much for you guys or doing too little? Well, I think what we need to do is just act, and we're acting. And so I think we need to move, and we need to move methodically toward a clearly restrictive stance, which we're doing. And then, in my view, then we either pause, depending on the data, we're going to have to see how this plays out. Uh, we get to above 3.4 by year end, or at or, at or above 3.4. And then we see, we have to let some of this play out. We don't have to keep climbing, 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 then it go down very quickly. Let's stay up there and let the economy do its thing. So for how long, right? And this is with Jan yeah. Hatzia's point, where he said, keep it there for possibly years and see the trickle-out effect. We don't know. I mean, we really need to let the data play out. You just don't know a priori. What data are you looking at? Inflation number one, for sure. That's the issue. That's Headline the Headline or issue. core? Well, uh, core for sure, because you know the volatile the volatility of energy and food is extreme, particularly because of the situation we have in Ukraine and around the world. This has been uh, this whole setup and uh, the chairman's speech, something of a, a totemic issue for Wall Street, and everybody's going to be tuning in yeah. at the top of the next hour. What's the message that the Fed would like investors to take away today? So I don't know what the Fed has. I can only speak for myself. I think the, the message is from me that we need to get inflation under control. We will do what it takes to get inflation under control. And hopefully, we can do that in a way that does not ruin what otherwise is a good economy. You look at the jobs data. You look at other parts of the economy. We don't want to do this in a way that really just squashes the jobs market right now. Is this whatever it takes, or is this Mario Draghi, whatever it takes? because everybody on Wall Street yeah. wants to know, would you risk recession to bring inflation down? It's possible. It's always possible to have a recession. At this point, I don't think it's in my forecast that it's probable. I think we can we can still do this. There's still a path to do this. To have, if, if there is a recession, it would be shallow and short, in my view. There's uh, two camps. One says get to the terminal rate as quickly as possible to get ahead of inflation. The other says move more slowly because you want to make sure that the lags don't bring down the economy. Yeah. Uh, which camp are you in? Again, where I am is let's get up to the clearly restrictive stance. 3.4 is a good number, 3.5. And then let's see how things play out from there. This word neutral has been thrown around yeah. a lot in the last couple of yeah, weeks. Yeah. You're smiling already. <laughs> so talk to me about what you think neutral is. What's restrictive? What is it and how do we know? Yeah. It's clearly above three, for sure. Uh, how much above? Again, I think we just have to see. Uh, today's data, we can talk about that. We're seeing glimmers of hope. And I emphasize glimmers of hope on the inflation front. We're not done. And so we need to continue to raise rates to make sure that those glimmers turn into a clear downward trend. How do you know when we have a clear downward trend? And clearly, as you've pointed out, there's two ways of looking at this. You keep hiking until you see right. 2 percent. That's clearly not where you want to go. You want to get to this place where you're restricted and you're waiting and you're convinced that we've got this trajectory, yeah. that we're moving back down towards 2. Right. I think what we'd all like is just a better understanding of what that world looks like. Yeah. How do we know when we see that world? Yeah, so clearly we have the numbers, right, core and headline. I also look at the distribution of inflation. That is, how many goods and services are above 5 percent, above 4 percent. As we see that distribution shrink again, think about the beginning of the pandemic. It was all about used cars and some other commodities. Let's start to bring that down, because right now it's pretty widespread. That, to me, would be a clear sign that we're making progress. Financial conditions are an important mechanism for you to sure. get your policy into the economy. Would you say we've seen an unwarranted easing of financial conditions through the summer? Yeah, I don't know if it's unwarranted, uh, but we need to continue to do what we have to do uh, with respect to the Fed funds rate, which we've committed. But clearly financial conditions would need to be tighter for you to achieve that. Well, no, let's let's talk about the housing market. And we let's already have now. a very sure. tight we already have a very tight housing market. So there already is progress being made. So you're comfortable. You don't believe there's a disconnect between what you're saying as a committee and, uh, and what you're seeing play out in financial yeah, not conditions. Yet. Not yet. I mean, it's something clearly watch, but I'm not worried about it at this point. Unemployment. Uh, you're expecting that to rise a little bit. That's yeah. the Fed's message. But at the same time, you're saying that at 3.5 uh, percent, it's below the natural rate. So how much of a rise is acceptable to you? And what do you say to the people who say, yeah, it's just a tiny rise, but it was my job? Yeah, I know. And that's what's difficult. And the, this is the balance, right, that we have to try to find. Because we know inflation hurts the lowest income people in our country. And 
because of losing jobs, it hurts those people the most too. So we have to find that balance. Uh, how much higher? It's hard to say exactly. Uh, I'm not in the camp of it being necessarily at 5%. We're going into this with an incredibly strong job market. This is not like other situations we've had historically. So I think we don't have to see a rapid rise in unemployment uh, to get inflation under control at this point. So Adam Posen was on earlier, and he was talking about how there has to be an acceptance of perhaps 3 percent for a longer period of time. That, yes, maybe mm -hmm. the trajectory has to be okay, but that has to be a tolerated yeah. inflation rate. Do you think that that's appropriate, given the concerns about unemployment? So I think what's most important is we keep moving toward two. Exactly the pace at which we get to two, I'm less worried about that, but we keep moving forward, right, and get to a position where inflation is consistently going down. That's the most important thing. So do you not buy the argument that if inflation remains above a certain point, regardless of the trajectory, for a long time, it yeah. gets into the psyche of Americans, and then they start to uh, right. sort of have a self-fulfilling prophecy oh, yeah. of inflation? You don't believe that? No, the number one risk is getting inflation expectations on anchor. We cannot let that happen. So, so far, it's not happened. We need to continue to act to make sure it doesn't. So are you watching the University of Michigan uh, one to five year, five to ten right. year forecast? Is that sort of the key data point? <laughs> He's already watching? <laughs> all all I mean, of the like, above. <laughs> you look at all the, the above, one? whether it's the New York Fed survey <laughs> or tips markets, you know, all those measures. So how, what's the response function to that? Doing what we're doing right now, continuing to move rates up methodically to get inflation down, period. Well, you mentioned the consumer. When you look at the economy these days, what do you see? We got the PCE numbers today. The uh, inflation yeah. data were great. Wages and salaries were great. But spending was weak. Well, that's to be expected, right? As we raise rates and we're trying to slow demand, you would expect that spending would come down. Are you worried about recession? I know that you say yeah. it doesn't have to happen, but what do you think the odds are? And uh, is, it, is there any way to foresee it, given the unusual nature of yeah. this uh, recession and recovery? Um, so at this point, it's not in my forecast that we hit a, a deep recession, not at all. Short and shallow is something we keep hearing. Yeah, you mentioned mine. it four minutes ago. Yeah. 12 months ago, the buzzword, you know what that was? Yeah. I won't mention it because it's like toxic around here. Right? <laughs> a bell rings, ejected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was clearly a massive failure. And, and it wasn't unique to this central bank. Right. A lot of people would say it on this program a million times. We discussed it with Mike McKee a million times. It was also a story that played out abroad and then didn't materialize. Right. Do you worry that we're doing that again? by having this conversation, because I can tell you, President Harker, every single day, short, shallow, short, shallow. Yeah. It's all they hear. It's yeah. all we hear every single day. Do you think we could be getting this wrong again? I'm not sure that we'd be getting it wrong again. What, go back and what did we miss? I think, what, I, what did I miss? Uh, go back to where we were. Not enough emphasis on the soft data. In a situation that's changing very rapidly, the data is lagging, and in particular, it's lagging in those quick change moments. So more emphasis on the soft data is really important. What we're hearing from our contacts is the soft data. They're starting to see supply chain constraints ease a little bit. They're starting to see some relief when it comes to hiring. Not everywhere, but in some cases. There's, so, but, and they don't plan on laying people off at this point. They worked very hard to get the people they have. They don't want to let them go. So I think in that situation, uh, I'm not sure that we're mischaracterizing a short and shallow potential, an emphasized potential recession. As you've said, though, this cycle has moved very quickly, and there's a feeling that the post-financial crisis communication architecture of this Federal Reserve held you back in the last 12 months. What needs to change? Well, I think we need to keep emphasizing that what we know, what we don't know, what we can know, what we can't know, and act appropriately. I mean, people want a level of precision in a situation that we're in, where we keep getting hit by issue after issue yeah. after issue. Now it's droughts globally, right? That where it's just impossible to put that level of precision on these numbers. Would you like the dot plot? to be thrown into the trash. <laughs> Would you like to see that gone? I think we need to continue to uh, communicate with the American people about what our, our views are. The beauty of the Fed is we have a diversity of opinions, and that's, you see those in the dots.